What's good folks? Today we're learning about meerkats. We will predict how the species will evolve to climate changes and other basic factors. Let's get started with some super advanced facts about meerkats. These guys like to dig holes to live in and hang in groups what we call mobs or gangs. There are about 20 to 50 cats in each of these families, but some have been recorded to have over 50 members. Meerkats have adapted to live in a dry desert environment. So what would happen if their environment changed? Let's find out. In their environment, the meerkats are used to not having much water. This is obviously because of the harsh desert conditions they face. But what if the situation turned on its head? What if rain flooded the savanna where they live? This would force them to adapt, or they could become extinct. These funny guys live underground in tunnels, but now they would no longer be able to because they would drown. This would cause them to adapt to new habitat. One of these adaptations could be the ability to swim. This could be done with the growing of webbed fingers and toes. Maybe, as more time passed, they would develop small fins on their arms. This would also change their food source. One of the main foods of meerkats are lizards, which live in dry environments. But if it rained all the time, the lizards would no longer be in their environment. Therefore, they would need to find new prey that are common in rainy environments. Another climate change could be constant tornadoes. Although they live underground, they probably wouldn't be safe from the strong winds of a tornado. This would cause them to adapt by being able to dig deeper so they could escape the tornadoes with bigger, more powerful arms. This wouldn't cause much change in the meerkat species as they are already designed to live underground. However, this again would cause change in the food that they eat. With constant tornadoes, they wouldn't be able to go up to the surface much, which is where most of their food sources are. They would have to act fast in getting food. This lack of food could cause a drop in the population, but maybe they could adapt and start eating bugs underground. Only time will tell. There are multiple ways an adaptation can occur. One of these is genetic drift. This theory revolves around the idea that an external factor that has nothing to do with the genetics kills a good portion of the species, distorting its original gene pool and allowing other traits to affect the population. However, this is only evident in isolated populations of the organism, and not the whole species. The next method is gene flow. This is the movement of alleles in a gene pool. This could be caused by an organism being introduced to a new environment. This causes changes in allele frequencies because some genes are needed more than they were in previous environments. An example would be the meerkat being introduced to an environment where it only rains. The allele frequency for dark rings around their eyes will drop because they don't need it to protect their eyes from the sun. Another way adaptation is possible is through a thing called mutation. Mutations occur when a genetic message carried by a gene is altered because of a damaged or changed DNA gene. This change can occur before birth or during the organism's life. Say your average meerkat is just enjoying life under the sun, digging holes like it does any other day, and then BAM! It's diagnosed with skin cancer because of the harsh UV rays the sun gives off. Now this isn't exactly a beneficial mutation that would result in an adaptation, but this is how one could occur. This of course varies in the population's genes. Next, non-random mating is another form of adaptation. This involves inbreeding in the population of a species. The desire for animals to do this comes from a concept called assortative mating, in which animals will choose to mate with other specimens that closely resemble themselves. In doing so, specific alleles are isolated and allowed to reproduce and spread throughout the population. For instance, a few meerkats develop web fingers. They choose to seek out those also with webbing, passing down their genes. The interesting thing with this method is that the unwebbed fingers trait is still able to exist alongside those with web fingers. So without having the other population decrease, the overall population should increase. The last mechanism of evolution is natural selection, aka survival of the fittest. You've probably heard of this, but do you really know what it means? This has to do with how suited a species is and its traits are to an environment. It's a simple concept really. Those who live the best in their environment get to pass on their traits. Those who aren't fit die before they can pass on their traits. As an example, the meerkats with the biggest arms can dig deeper tunnels to avoid the tornadoes, and those with small arms get sucked away and killed by the tornado. This would cause an increase in the more fit meerkats and a decrease in the weaker ones. If the tornadoes continued, eventually the weaker ones would die out and there would only be stronger armed meerkats. While we are on the topic of the fittest of the species, let's talk about the competition for resources. If food was getting scarcer, the more fit meerkats would get it and the weaker ones would starve. This fight for the resources around them is another big factor in a species evolving and would be another reason why the weaker meerkats would die out. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and we hope you learned about evolution. Goodbye!